Right, uh, hi everyone. Uh, we're going to be watching a video on uh, mechanisms uh, today. Uh, it's going to be a series of uh, lessons on mechanisms. And uh, I really wanted to learn a lot really through this uh, video. Plus, um, uh, along the way, I hope uh, you enjoy the lessons as well. So, let's get on with the lessons for today. Alright, um, just to give an overview of uh, what is mechanism, uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of mechanisms in action and uh, in our modern world contains abundance of mechanisms. Uh, in fact, a large portion of uh, uh, man-made artifacts contains mechanisms uh, and there are many of them around and that we can tend to take them for granted most of the time. All right? uh, you have seen mechanisms in action as I mentioned, for example, you have the engines, uh, you have other mechanism that is part of the uh, larger mechanisms. Uh, in fact, um, um, a, a, a typical gun can be also be a part of the mechanisms as well. And last but not least, even your everyday life that you when you wear your clothes, the zip itself actually a mechanism in action. Uh, just to give a even more overview on, on all these mechanisms, simple items such as uh, scissors, wheelbarrows, taps are all based on mechanism. While more complicated objects, subject, uh, objects such as a car or the human body all right, may contain hundreds of mechanisms. Uh, I just wanted to think through how a human body can also be a mechanism. It's a very interesting idea that you can actually think about and see why we consider human body as a mechanism as well. Okay. Uh, in fact, in uh, the car engine that I'm talking about, there are many mechanisms in that. Uh, see whether you can actually identify some of these mechanisms that is being shown. Right. So, what are the lesson objectives for today's lesson? Uh, at the end of the uh, at the end of the day, you should be able to state the basic uh, task of uh, mechanism. Able to identify and name the types of motions that the mechanism actually make. Able to differentiate the classes of lever system. Able to understand and apply the principle of lever mechanism, and uh, last but not least, you should be able to relate linkages as systems of levers. The objective seems to be quite a lot, but we hope to cover all of them, and I hope you'll be able to understand uh, uh, more about mechanisms. Okay, uh, for the first objective, to understand the functions of uh, mechanism. Uh, what functions can mechanism perform? There are some basic tasks as well as the other types of functions, for example, uh, mechanism can change the type of movement, the place of movement, the speed of movement, direction of uh, movement, distance of movement, and as well as uh, amount of force the movement provides. To understand further uh, about the change of type of uh, motion, there are four basic types of uh, uh, movement that the mechanism actually uh, can provide. For example, the first type of uh, motion or the movement will be linear, which is in a straight line. And uh, another type of motion that a mechanism actually can do is actually rotary, which is rotation, uh, going round and round. Uh, Sometimes we call it a circular motion. All right. For example, with the wheels. And next motion will be the reciprocating, uh, forwards and backwards in a straight line like a sewing machine needle that goes up and down as well as considered as a reciprocating motion and last but not least will be the oscillation or the oscillating motion forwards and backwards along a arc or a pendulum as an example as a pendulum uh, if we can think of other motions uh, please you can think through and then uh, we can discuss during the lesson just to give you a further idea about how the motion look like uh, we have the linear motion, if you were to on a switch uh, forward, you are actually creating a linear motion. All right. For rotary motion, the motor rotation is actually creating a rotary motion. And a very good example of the oscillation or oscillating motion would be the grandfather's clock, where you can see the clock going in this direction and up, uh, up direction. As well as last but not least, uh, reciprocating, you can think of the same switch going uh, when you on it and then you off it and you on it and off it, you are actually creating a reciprocating motion. Um, just now we mentioned about the functions of mechanism. So well, let's jump into the first function that we talked about just now, would be the change place of uh, motion. 
All right. It is necessary sometimes to produce an output uh, movement which is some distance away from the input. So a very good example would be the saxophone where you actually blow air into this uh, nozzle and you use this, your fingers to activate the mechanisms and the output is somewhere else from the where you actually blow in. So you can see that the mechanism actually does what we call the change the place of motion as well. Right? In fact, uh, we can, uh, can you think of a bicycle as, as a way of a mechanism changing uh, the place of motion? All right? uh, talking about change of speed of motion, I think you, most of you would have uh, cycled before. You have a mechanism which is a chain and a sprocket which can actually change the speed of uh, motion. So, uh, the, the, in fact, the, the faster you pedal, the bicycle tends to go faster is a very good example. But then you can see that, uh, in fact, when you even you cycle at a particular speed, the, the bicycle actually can move forward in a linear motion much faster than uh, what you think it is. All right? So, in that way, the chain and sprocket actually provides a change uh, in speed of motion. Right. And uh, part of this uh, mechanism, uh, you can also think of the gears as the one way of uh, changing uh, motion. Okay. Uh, come to the change of direction of uh, motion, uh, many of you would have uh, example at the parade square and you have seen our student counsellors raising a flag. In fact, the, the, the pulley system that is on the top of the flagpole actually provides a change of direction of motion. So, uh, as you are pulling the string down, which is one way down and then you see the flag raising. So in that way, we actually uh, think of a mechanism providing this uh, function called change uh, direction of motion. And another good example you can actually think of is actually a system system at the, in the toilet. So as you push the handle down, you have another mechanism which you can actually release the water down. All right? So in that way, it, change, uh, it gives you the change of direction of motion uh, for a particular mechanism like this. Okay, start. All right. Um, Another function that the mechanism provides is actually a change of distance of motion. Uh, what you are seeing here is a very simplified version of a, a big uh, uh, machine which is called a pentagram, which can actually uh, helps you to draw a smaller drawing and enlarge it to a bigger drawing. Right? A better way to explain this idea of a change of distance of motion would be a small movement sometimes needs to be amplified to create a larger movement or vice versa. As a driver, when you drive, you are actually creating a very small motion say as a driver at your wheels but then there are other mechanisms which actually uh, call the pinion and uh, rack and pinion which you can actually provide a larger motion at the wheels all right so it's a very good way to explain uh, how a mechanism can come into play to create a change of distance of motion as well another um, uh, function that the mechanism actually provides is what you call a change amount of force whereby you just need a very small input force uh, which you can actually be amplified to a larger output force. For example, to lift uh, a car or an engine, we actually use a, a, a jack uh, and when you uh, put in a smaller effort, you can actually lift a car which is of a 1000 kg or even 500 kg up uh, above the ground. So in that way, you're actually uh, using a mechanism to uh, give you the function which is to change the amount of force uh, that you can create. We have uh, more or less covered the aspect of uh, what are the motions that the mechanisms can create uh, and as well as we look at the functions of mechanisms so far. So what we're going to do right now is to go directly into the uh, different types of mechanisms that you're going to be learning for today. All right? So the first one will be the liver system. I think you should have covered uh, liver systems in your primary school, even, even secondary one and secondary two uh, mechanism lessons. So it's not very uh, different from what we have covered so far. But anyway, just to recap on uh, the about livers. Okay, a liver is basically just a long uh, stick that you can push or pull against a fulcrum to move something. A lever helps you move something heavy or make something uh, go fast. All right. So we are going to uh, look at some examples of uh, levers. Okay. As well as uh, levers, some modern examples of levers are using a hammer to pull out a nail, uh, using a bottle opener to open a, a bottle cap, or using a screwdriver to pry the lid of the can of paint or pair of scissors. All these are part and parcel of examples of uh, lever systems. So you can imagine 
uh, you uh, as a user trying to use mechanisms but actually some of these mechanisms that they've been using actually call levers. Okay. There are three types of uh, levers that uh, we actually classify them into. The first type will be the first class lever and of course the second type will be the second class and third type will be the third class. So we're going to look at the first class lever. Uh, a first class lever as a given in this uh, diagram uh, involves uh, a fulcrum and you have a force that is actually it can be coming from you as an input force to lift a weight which is uh, another distance away All right. so a first class lever is actually a stick where the fulcrum is between the weight and the energy moving the weight as well and uh, some common first class levers or seesaws, uh, crowbars uh, pliers and uh, scissors. This is a very good example of the first class lever system. So I, uh, I just wanted to remember how is this uh, uh, position of this uh, fulcrum, uh, the force and the load is being distributed uh, in this plane. So I wanted to uh, have that in mind. For the first class lever again, uh, to make the lever lifting the nail with a minimum effort you can see that you can actually change the distance where the effort can be so the further away the effort is from the fulcrum uh, you should be able to uh, use very less effort to lift a very large load so in fact by shifting the fulcrum uh, okay, across this plane you can actually uh, uh, either you can uh, give less effort to uh, bring about a larger output of force uh, so just uh, I mentioned just now that there are very good examples that we have been using uh, in our daily life which can be considered as levers which will be the uh, scissors whereby the effort is here and the fulcrum will be the movable joint here as well as the load will be actually the paper that you're actually trying to cut. Uh, here as well uh, you have seen a very old way of uh, doing a weighing uh, of things so where you place your load here all right. This is the effort or the weight you can actually put in to see how much is the weight, and this is the movable joint which we call the fulcrum. Coming to the second class levers, a second class lever is also a stick whereby the fulcrum is at one end of the stick. Uh, you push the other end, and the weight is in the middle of the stick. Just to give an example, right in the second class lever, the fulcrum has been shifted from from the middle all the way to the end. The load is actually in between the uh, force or the effort and the fulcrum and you should be able to use very less effort to lift this load in, in this uh, combinations of uh, fulcrum uh, effort as well as the force right uh, also the other common examples of second class lever system would be your doors staplers wheelbarrows and can openers um, another way of uh, representing the second class lever system will be uh, of this, uh, it's a very good diagram to analyze whereby the fulcrum is here and the load is here as well as the effort is uh, further away from the fulcrum itself so you can actually uh, think of this as a wheelbarrow whereby the load is actually you can have a heavy weight of uh, bricks or even cement packets whereby the worker actually uses a very small effort just to push uh, uh, across a particular distance without much uh, uh, with mark, which mark is. So in that way, uh, second class lever system can be considered as a force amplifier whereby you use a very small effort to lift a very big load in fact. Okay. Right, uh, coming to the third class of lever or the, uh, uh, the final uh, type of lever that we have would be the third class lever. Uh, it's actually again a stick where the fulcrum is at one end of the stick you push the you push on the middle and the weight is at the other end of the stick uh, we can see again uh, very similar to the second class uh, lever system the fulcrum is uh, very similar to the second class uh, lever system the position but the force is being shifted to the middle and the load is at the end all right uh, with the third class lever system you have to put in more energy or more force than you would just lifting the weight but you get a way to move a large distance in return. So if you can see the advantage of the third class lever system is to, of course you're using a larger force, but your weight or the load can go on a, a larger distance of uh, being lifted to another larger distance. Okay? Uh, some common examples of a uh, third class lever system would be a broom, uh, uh, pole, 
all right, a fishing rod, uh, baseball bat, uh, and other, in fact, our own uh, human arms, where when we lift a uh, load, uh, we actually can classify our arm as a third class liver system. Okay. Again, just to represent uh, the third class liver system, your pivot or the fulcrum is here, all right, the effort is in the middle, and the load will be at the end. Like I mentioned before, you will be using a large effort to lift the weight but then your advantage of using the third class lever system is that the load will go in a very larger distance all right so a very good example would be the fishing rod itself whereby the fulcrum is here right the effort that you actually to lift the fish will be uh, the, the the drum that you actually rotate and then the load will be a further distance away so if you're actually lifting the fish and the, the distance that you can cover in terms of the, the load being lifted will be a larger distance. Uh, we have learned a lot about the levers, the three different classes of lever. Uh, uh, we can apply what we call the principle of moments when the lever system is at equilibrium. What does it mean is that where the clockwise moment is actually is equal to anti-clockwise moment. Right? Uh, what does it mean the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment? So you have um, uh, two um, forces sitting on a plane and the, this is where the pivot is so you can imagine that uh, this weight is actually trying to pull down the uh, okay so you can imagine that this weight here is actually creating what I call the clockwise uh, moment and this uh, weight here will actually counter uh, react and actually will create the anti-clockwise uh, moment. So in when when these two uh, weights are equal and um, the the whole structure is as a stable uh, condition, we call it the, the structure is at the equilibrium, and we can actually apply what we call the clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. So how do we calculate then the clockwise moment? Would be the load, all right, which is the F uh, one. Um, multiplied by the distance from where it is actually sitting from the pivot and for the anti-clockwise moment which is created by this weight we actually can calculate it by the weight it provides as well as the distance where it is sitting from the pivot all right so by uh, by putting them into the by putting them into this equation we can actually see whether they are stable or not stable so if they are stable we can say that the structure is actually in Right. Uh, if you want to uh, further understand the principle of movement, you can actually watch the video which is uh, magic of physics. So please uh, log on to your YouTube and you type these words to watch the video as well. So we are now moving on to uh, linkages, it's another type of mechanism that we'll be learning as part of lessons today. All right. So just to give an overview of uh, linkages, uh, linkages are what we call the compound levers. All right. It's an extension to what we learned as levers just now. So it's a compound levers, uh, one lever operates on another. All right. So very interesting way of how uh, levers can be connected to create what we call the linkages. So uh, give you an example of products uh, with linkages. Right, so you have seen uh, stands like this before, right? And you have this uh, umbrella where you can actually pull uh, the mechanism where the umbrella linkages are actually expands to give you the shape, right? So we have chairs which can actually be collapsible, right? So they also have linkages which can actually enable you to do this uh, folding and unfolding of chairs as well. Okay. Right. Uh, just now I mentioned about um, linkages are actually the compound. Or uh, uh, linkage, I mean levers connected together. All right. Uh, a good example will be the nail clipper. As you can see, the handle is actually a second class uh, lever system. I'm talking about the handle being this, right? Whereby you actually put in the effort here, right? And you have the load here, and then the fulcrum at the, at the other end. So it's a second class lever. Uh, as for the upper jaw, which is here. Right, it's actually a third class uh, lever system where the fulcrum is here, the load is at the end and the uh, effort is actually in the middle. So in that way you can see the two classes of lever coming together 
to form these uh, linkages. So nail clipper is actually a very good example to study as uh, one of the lever system. I mean, sorry for linkages system. Okay. So uh, uh, just now we mentioned about that. I think it's a very good diagram to analyze and find out how the combination of two levers can actually uh, create uh, very less effort just to cut this uh, nail. This is actually the load uh, we are considering here. Okay. Uh, what are the purposes of uh, linkages? Okay, linkages are designed to change the direction of uh, force or motion, right? Allow two parts to move at uh, once, and also to make objects move identical to each other. Right? Let's look at some uh, um, graphical symbols which can be represented to understand how a linkage system works. So, if you see in a diagram whereby uh, certain points are actually darkened. Right, it's called a fixed a fixed uh, pivot. Uh, if the joint is actually left uh, unshaded, all right, it's actually a loose pivot. That means they are movable joints. All right, so you, we have seen other um, uh, notations like the right, uh, left, down, and up. These are the type of movement we can be created. Uh, we are looking at when we are looking at all these uh, symbols. We actually look study trying to study the linkages. Where are the fixed points? or the pivots, where are the loose pivots and how the motion actually happens in the linkage system. Okay. Uh, what is the purpose of linkages? The ability of each rod to move will be limited by moving or the fix, fix uh, uh, pivots. The input at one uh, end of the mechanical linkages will be different from the output in place, all right? speed, direction and uh, other ways. Right. A fixed pivot is uh, one that turns around at one point but does not move away from that point. The symbol which I mentioned just now where it's a circle which is a shaded circle. All right. A movable or the moving pivot is one that can move away from its uh, original uh, position and the symbol is actually uh, uh, an unshaded circle. We're going to look at uh, some examples of uh, types of uh, linkages. All right. So uh, they are very new to you, so I just want you to let you study the diagram and also to recognize the names given to such linkages, alright? So you can see that this is actually a fixed pivot point and uh, these two are the movable pivots where you can allow to move, alright? So uh, when we try to push uh, the linkages in this way, you actually will be creating a motion. Right, so this uh, motion, we actually call it a reverse motion uh, linkage or the name of this linkage will be the reverse motion uh, linkage. Uh, again, talking about the symbols uh, related to linkages, so these two are fixed, right? these four of them are movable pivots. So again, uh, when we try to push uh, this uh, linkage, you can actually call, create a parallel motion. So in this linkage is actually called the parallel uh, motion linkage. We have the other types of linkages whereby uh, crank and slider linkage is quite popular and later we will see uh, uh, what is the crank and slider mechanism can be applied to. So for this we have a fixed uh, pivot and you allow the other linkage to move across uh, a plane. All right? So uh, we have this crank and slider linkage as well. And uh, last but not least uh, the bell crank linkage. So again you have the fixed pivot here you allow the other two uh, points to move and when you sort of uh, push this uh, the bigger linkage you actually uh, create motions uh, in oscillation so in that way uh, you can actually do certain apply certain linkages to certain uh, type of mechanisms so you can actually create a different type of motion than uh, the normal levers can do so uh, this uh, like I mentioned this uh, linkage is the bell crank linkage just to go further into this uh, reverse motion uh, linkage that, that, that we saw just now. All right? uh, as the top rod moves to the left, the bottom rod actually moves to the right. So that's where it, the reverse motion can happen. A uh, linkage which makes the output uh, move in the same direction as the input is called the push and uh, push pull linkage. A very good example would be the foldable chair that we saw, whereby um, the, uh, the linkages actually, uh, the output actually move in the same direction as the input as well. Right? Uh, uh, examples of these are found in the fold up tables or even chairs as well. Uh, when you look at the parallel motion uh, linkage, right? Uh, I think you can see the application of this uh, parallel motion linkage whereby you can see some of the two boxes whereby the box, uh, I mean the, the, the container can actually be folded up 
and we actually creating the parallel motion linkage. Right? So when the lid of the toolbox is open, an extra set of drawers can be unfolded. Uh, this allows more tools to be stored actually. All right? There's a purpose of this uh, parallel motion linkage being applied in the toolbox. All right, just to explain further on the crank and uh, slider linkages, all right, the mechanism actually composed of the uh, three important parts. Uh, the crank, which is actually the rotating disc, uh, the slider, which slides inside of the tube, right, and last but not least, will be the connecting rod uh, that connects the slider and the uh, the crank itself, all right. Uh, as you can see, the crank and uh, slider uh, mechanism actually can uh, create or the output motion can be a reciprocating motion whereby when the crank rotates 180 degrees right, uh, the slider actually goes in one direction all right? so when the crank completes the 360 degrees you would have completed the to and pro motion which is the reciprocating motion right? further on the crank and slider linkages one of the best example of a crank and, uh, crank and slider mechanism is a steam train the steam pressure powers the slider mechanisms as the connecting rod pushes and pulls the uh, wheel around. All right, so in that way, you actually can think of it as a crank, as a wheel that actually can create a uh, rotary motion to move the train forward. All right, the cylinder of an internal combustion engine is actually another example of a crank and a crank and slider mechanism. The last example of the uh, the linkages uh, that we studied just now will be the bell and crank linkage. This linkage allows horizontal movement uh, to be convert to a, converted to a vertical movement. All right? So if we can uh, think of it as uh, this, uh, this, what you call it? this lever. Okay, this lever is being pushed and you can actually create uh, another movement which is upward which is the vertical motion as well. So it okay, uh, also works the opposite way of course. And a very good example of the bell crank uh, mechanism, I think most of you would have pressed the uh, bicycle uh, brake whereby when you press the bicycle brake, there's a cable that connects to the brake so you're actually uh, pulling the cable upwards and then the brake actually moves inwards in a horizontal position to brake your uh, the, the, the tire from uh, any motion All right? in that way, you can see the application of the bell crank linkage in a bicycle brake So we have come to the end of the, uh, the first lesson which is on uh, the, the, the introduction to mechanisms as well as the, uh, the idea of uh, mechanisms. Okay. okay, we have come to the end of the lesson on the first lesson on mechanism. I hope you have uh, learned a lot in terms of uh, what are the different types of liver systems. Uh, you have learned a bit of uh, linkages whereby the, uh, when you add few levers together you are actually forming a linkage. And uh, last but not least, we have two more things that we have learned today. The, diff the four different types of motions that the mechanism can create, which are the linear, rotary, reciprocating, the oscillation motion. And last but not least, we actually look at the functions of mechanism, the, the six functions of mechanism that we touched on today. So we, I hope to see you again for the next lesson. Alright, goodbye.